Hi, how are you? <laughs> welcome to welcome to my dining room, gentlemen. Kim Holcomb, King TV, Seattle. That's a very nice dining room. Gorgeous. It looks like a set of a morning show. <laughs> well, thank That's you. right. It does. <laughs> it does. It does. Like you're about to well, bake I'm, something. Some well, scones. I'm, <laughs> would that I could and then share it with you. I'm really excited to talk to you guys, though, especially as a representative of the great Pacific Northwest, even All though right. you didn't actually shoot here. Repping. We appreciate the shots of Mount Hood in the movie. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But Matt, I wanted to start with you and ask, what is it like to be directed by your best friend while he is wearing purple and pink spandex and mirrored wraparound sunglasses? And an orange wig. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, no, it was a lot of fun and, uh, and really kind of a natural extension of what we already do. You know, we've written together for a long time and we've, we've been acting together since we were in high school. So, like, we did, the, we did our first play, play together, I think, in 1986. So, um, we've, been, we've been at it for a long time. So, it didn't feel, it didn't feel really any different. It was, uh, it, was, it was just a lot of fun. Did you ever have a moment, though, when you looked at him and you were like, Dude, I can't take you seriously right now. Yeah, there was one day when the wig, he, he, he had, hadn't put the wig, he hadn't set the wig yet, so he had just stuffed it on his head, <laughs> and it was kind of flapping off. I mean, I, I just finally said, dude, I can't listen to a word you're saying <laughs> until you do something about the wig. Like, I, I'm not hearing anything. You know, and he's like, hey, what, what, dude, is it that bad? Is it that? I was like, just look at yourself, man. And he looked, he was like, oh, my God. So, yeah, there was, there was, there was one incident. I love it. Marlon, I was thinking about it, that next to Viola, your performance may be the one that MJ scrutinizes the most, just mm. given that he has said you're, the man you play was the sort of MVP of getting this deal done in real life. Right. Have you heard anything from his camp? Are you prepared for a Michael Jordan review? Um, I, I'm hoping he likes it. It, it would be terrible if, if, uh, if the greatest ball player of all time hated my performance. That would mm. that, that'd break my spirits. But I, you know, I, I I just remind him of some of his games where he didn't do so well. And, you know, <laughs> some of his games, you can count him on you can count him on one hand too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I think I think he's gonna enjoy the entire movie. I and hope so. What's great yeah. about the movie is no, there's not one bad performance in this entire movie, and uh, it's, it's just the extras was good. Everybody was great, and uh, I think Ben and Matt did a great job telling a great story about a great sneaker, and uh, you know. Worn by a great basketball player. Couldn't agree more. Okay, I have to show you guys this. These are my husband's pride and joy. Yes, those wow. are the These are Jordan 3s, black and cement. I mean, I would drop them, but he would get Damn. mad at me. But I feel like I know. Uh, I think he's rocked them enough because <laughs> he got all kind impressive. of wrinkles in them. He's had those. Those look like he got the originals. Those are the originals. Well, okay, but it was what he couldn't because he grew up with very modest means, so he couldn't afford them. And right. then when they, when Nike did a drop like four years ago, he's up at 6 a.m. on that app to get the yeah. shoes and got them. And it really was kind of like a dream realized for him. So do you have your own sneaker stories or something in your life that you just- You have no idea you the can to. of worms you just opened. You have no idea who you're talking to. You, th okay, go ahead. There's a reason I he could tell you- I probably got more Jordans than Jordan. I bet that's true. I have 1,100 pairs of Jordans. Like those How shoes you show me, I got four pairs of those, black and cement. And they got a reissue coming out, tell them the white and cement, they're coming out in April, like later on this month. Tell your husband to grab those because they're going to have the yellow bottoms like the original one. So tell oh, him to get those. So My Lord. Matt, <laughs> I mean, do you have a pair yourself or you just need to go to Marlon's closet and borrow a few? I'm a, I'm a size 11, unfortunately. Uh, Marlon's a size 12. Sorry about that. So it's, 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 it's painful. I just missed that. He told me I could have any shoes I wanted, and then I realized his feet were too big. So, so when you just stuff the sock in there. Stuff a sock in there, like when I was a kid taking my brother's <laughs> shoes. <laughs> did you used to do that? No. I, I, st my, I did with Damon's. When he, I, he got you know, Nikes from Jordan when they was on Living Color, and I only wore a size 9. He wore a 12, and I did stuff it. <laughs> I did. That's perfect. I love these stories. You guys, thank you so much. I know we're super over, but I want to say I brought my 17-year-old son with me to the screening and he just loved it too so it's not just that it's a nostalgia bomb for those of us of a certain age it's just terrific so that's awesome i'm bringing my kids tonight to the premiere so yeah. they're gonna love it yeah they're gonna I be like so. dad what is this phone you're speaking on i know what's so that weird. cord with the phone <laughs> <laughs>
Erin Holcomb, King TV, Seattle, representing the great Pacific Northwest. Thank Even you. Even the new film here, we appreciate you showing Mount Hood. We did. Oh, we filmed right. up there, and we and we tried to represent the everybody. You know, it was like it rains, it's overcast. So we were <laughs> relentlessly trying to. Uh, uh, I was talking to Chris. It was funny because when we went up to Portland recently, it was like the sunniest day we'd ever seen. We're like, we put all this rain and overcast in all these shots. But uh, it's actually, uh, I guess your reputa reputation is a little overblown for being gloomy. Or maybe we just say that so the less people will move here. So the Californians right. won't flock up there, probably. There you go, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so Ben, I, I have to start with you by asking, which was more fun for you? Telling Matt he was gonna have that stomach or the middle hair part? You know, we actually, the 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 bodysuit uh, and the, we did some something with the lens to make his widen his face and I I shot his profiles from the other side and flopped the film so that it sort of would look a little bit different but that stuff he was uh, that was pretty simple it was trying to find a hairstyle that was 80s and real that didn't look like it was trying to be attention getting was right. actually kind of tricky. Cause like, you don't want it to be like, ha ha ha, we're making fun of, look how crazy everybody was in the eighties, but you still have to look authentic, you know? And, and that, yes. that took some experimentation. And, but uh, he, he went for the, he went for the kind of like, it was like kind of a Sean Cassidy kind of thing. <laughs> totally. It did, everything felt so authentic. And Chris, for you, I'm just curious. I mean, you, you know the person you were playing in this film. Yes. What was the sort of essence of him or the one thing where you were like, this needs to be part of, of how, I portray him. You know, everybody I talk, he had me talking to a lot. Howard White had me talking to so many people. And, and, and his, I think his, his, his positivity, you know, that was what I wanted to come across because I knew in the script that you know, it was a lot of, a lot of uh, choices that, uh, you know, Matt character had to make, but I wanted my character to be positive in his life. So that was one of the things that I said, oh man. And that's Howard White. He's, you talk to him, he's gonna always find something positive out of the, a situation. So it was great. I love that. I have to ask both of you, specifically you, Ben, but Chris, you're a part of this too. I loved how some of the most compelling scenes were phone calls, old school rotary phone calls. Those how were the days you where you, that's how you had to make a phone call. You had of to pick course. up the big plastic yeah. thing on the desk. That's we didn't have any. Yeah. Uh, yep. That was, a, that was how was business got done and how big decisions happened. So yeah. we, we can't, something I've always wanted to do, which was to shoot um, the phone calls at the same time. Usually you film one phone call and the actor will read with somebody off camera and another one. But I always thought like so much of what happens on a phone call is what people don't say, how they react, and, and just allowing people to, to do it with each other. So we built the sets in the same space uh, so that the phone calls could happen. So Chris could be, uh, look like he was at the airport, but he was just out in front of the building and Matt could be up in his office. And, and uh, for example, and I, it's just because I always wished I had something like that as an actor and I knew as a director, cutting back and forth, you want to get that uh, the, the people who are in sync with one another. I had such great actors. I knew it would just it would be better, and it, and it was. It was he made great. it so natural, and I didn't even think about how genius that was to afterwards because we, you know, Ben was uh, 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 Ben was on the, no Matt was on the other line, and it was like I was like, where's everybody? It was like I said, where's Ben? He's upstairs. I thought he was gonna be down there. And Chris, do this, do that. And he was just like, you on, man? You better be ready, and it was awesome. Yeah, because he was all the way outside by the back of we were actually near a real airport. So he was shooting, so we were managed to be, he was 200 yards away, but we filmed at the same time and we could watch, and it let me watch the monitors. So I'm watching and like, you don't necessarily go to the person who's talking. You see somebody say something, you watch the person reacting. And it's also a, a lesson in kind of how to cut the scene. So that, so what, just to clarify, what we are seeing on film was shot as live, real time, yes. actual conversation. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. One more thing for me to absolutely love about this film. Thank you so much. I know you guys have a, long day ahead of you or Thank behind you. you at this point. But I, I did have to tell you, I screened it with my 17-year-old son, and he also loved it. So All right. Thank you. Tell him to bring his friends. Awesome. I, oh, I bet he will. And they'll all be wearing their Jordans. Uh -oh. uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> These are my husbands. I have to be very careful with them. Oh, yes. uh, I like those. <laughs> all right. All right thanks, thanks, you guys. Take Thank care. Thank you. Thank you.